All right, guys. So, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Are, we not, are we in afternoon yet? Yeah. We're in afternoon. Cool. This is going to be a pretty short meeting, guys. Um, I, I was really debating on what I wanted to talk to you about today. And, and I think it's pretty cool because it's more like I would rather take a little bit more time away from the day-to-day, -day, like the field, the sales a little bit, and, and really just pour into more people about, hey, this is what where the long term is. Okay, this is this is a, a really important time because we have a lot of sharp people pushing for leadership. Okay, raise your hand if you're entry level. Okay, like look around. Look at these are the, the, the future leaders of tomorrow. And I heard this great quote by, by Ken Weinrup, who's uh, who's a partner in, in the Verizon campaign with Larry Tinnebaum, and he makes well into the seven figures. Well into the seven figures. And he says one thing, and I want you to write this quote down. He goes, so many people going through this program get in their hamster, okay, so this is a quote. Don't get lost in their hamster wheel of today's production. Instead, focus on tomorrow's leaders. Right, think about what's more important, today's production or tomorrow's leaders. What's more important in a company, right? The people who are gonna lead the charge or the people who, who are doing the day-to-day? -day? Yeah, don't get lost in, in the hamster wheel of today's production. Instead, focus on tomorrow's leaders. And the thing is, is like, I tell people this, is that I had to learn this the hard way. Okay, so a little quick short story is that I didn't know where standards derived from. I did not know the importance of standards. I did not know why it was so important, why I needed to teach my new hire how to do 10 like me every day. I'm like, Richard, uh, I'll just do all the sales myself. I'm like, hey bro, what's your code? I'm like, and I don't recommend doing this, but I'm like, hey, what's your code? All right, cool, I'll give you two by the end of the day. Don't talk to me. And then I'll just go on and sell. And I'll do eight, and I'll give them two, and I'm like, all right, cool, let's have a good one. I'm like, I'm happy with that. And then they would leave after one week. And it's so funny, I'm like, Richard, I'm giving these people money, why don't they stay? And I'll just hand them sales, right? And, and, and I never understood the importance of creating a standard mentally to be able to hold a standard physically. I never understood that, the importance of that. And it's so cool because when Richard ran this meeting for me, right, which is our upline who runs the Dallas office, he, he showed how difference in standard might not affect you today, but why standards will affect your income for the next three years. And that's exactly what I wanna talk about, okay, it is, is the, the importance of standards. Okay, so we're gonna talk a little bit about money. Now, if you're that person, like, oh my God, Danny's talking about money. Okay, I was always taught, hey, you're not allowed to ask your parents how much money they make or how much money they have. Who, who else was like that with me? Okay, I realized, I realized that I was not allowed to ask my parents about money because they didn't have enough of it. And when I realized that, that people don't like talking about what they're lacking in, was what was the biggest flaw, okay? And so when I came into this industry and they started talking a lot about money, I was like, this is really cool. Like they're so open, they're so transparent, right? Like they're they're honest on how much they're making. I'm like, that's so weird. And it turned me off a little bit. I'm like, why do they want to talk so much about money? And it's because, right? This next quote that that I really like is, "Money amplifies morals. Money amplifies morals." What you hold to be important now will be replicated in management. That's why, that's why this process is so important. Okay, think about it. That's why the six months are so important because we wanna teach you values. We wanna we want teach you ethic. We wanna teach you morale because when you start recruiting 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 people and they all have an office of where they only know your voice, can we agree you're gonna be a big influence to them? So if you don't have the right morals, you're gonna be a good or a bad influence. Bad. We're gonna be bad influences, and we don't wanna do that, right? That would that'd be disrespectful to the opportunity, and that'd be disrespectful to our outlines. That's why the six months training is so important, to hold standards not only in the production, in the field, but also in ethics. And if you hold standards in ethics, right, it will produce production in the field. Okay, I don't, I, don't, I don't want you to at least internalize that a little bit, okay? I want us to internalize that just a little bit more, okay? Ethics amplifies production, not the other way around. Ethics amplifies production. Doing the right thing when no one's looking is the reason why people qualify. 
okay? Qualifying does not make you a good person. Being a good person makes you qualified. Everyone understand that concept now? Yeah. Okay, so now translate that into management. Okay, you can hire people who do 10 every single day and have a, a have a just this, just this zoo office that just that goes out there and they're just sales animals. Or you can have someone that, that is a little rough around the edges and, and coach them up and coach them ethically and morally that doesn't get the, the sales right away because they're overqualified to do the sales. And instead you teach them the importance of the sales and then they get it done. That way they can actually go into the leadership on why they actually got hired in the first place. Which route sounds hard, first off. The first or the second round? Second. The second round sounds harder. Which one, long term, is better? The second one. So if it's harder, does it mean it's wrong? No. No, it just means that you will receive the fruit later on. There's two terms. There's instant gratification, and then there's? Delayed. Delayed gratification. There's short term gratification, instant gratification, and then there's delayed gratification. I kept giving my people, my people the sales, giving them qualifying days. And it would produce me these leaders. And it produced me leaders who, who were leaders by title, not by mentality. Right, because the day I let them go solo, they'd go and roll a donut. And I'm like, bro, what happened? And it was because I was giving them on sales. So they actually had no fundamentals to actually produce leadership on their own. They were, it was almost like I was creating leeches on me as a, as a bad leader. I was creating people who, who, who needed me to be around in order for them to even survive. And isn't that exhausting as a leader? That, that the office only does good when you're there, right? Richard is, is in, a, in a business now where after three years of being an owner, four years of being an owner, He's created just this well-oiled machine where people don't even know if he's there or not. Yeah, he sent 87 people to the field the other day. This is a crazy statistic. His office alone in Dallas, Texas, knocked on 10,000 doors yesterday. His office alone knocked on 10,000 doors. Do you think they're gonna sell something? Yeah. I'm like, at least one. Right? He has four different campaigns, and, and it not only does that produce a lot of revenue, but it produces this place where you need to hold down the standards. And if we create the, that, that, that same mentality where standards over, uh, standards over production, it, it's gonna make the production feed into it. Ethics amplifies production, not the other way around. And in management, this is what it looks like, okay? That the average for Verizon, okay, is about 2.3, on, on a national scale, but water is about three. So can we say the average, can we say that national average can be like about 2.5? Yeah. Okay, 2.5, awesome. Awesome, so 2.5. Now the average office runs about 10 to 15 people. Remember when we interviewed you? You say, hey, you're gonna be the core leader for about 10 to 15 people. Okay, the reason why is because nationally the average office runs about 10 to 15. Okay, Richard's organization, our organization that you're a part of is, is absolutely insane. Okay, uh, Tracy and Alante, they actually just broke 30 leaders as of last week. So you have 30 leaders in their crew, 50 people going to the field a day. Okay, and there, there are cross lines in, in Hollywood, California. Right, we're, we're definitely gonna get to that position. Cassandra and Charlotte has about 15, 20 leaders. She has about 25, 30 people going to the field every single day on, on water. Okay, so we run, we run, they run a very well-oiled machine. This uh, industry runs a very well-oiled machine under Richard's uh, men mentorship. Okay, but the average across the nation is about 10 to 15. Can we, can we agree there? Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. So, if we have 2.5 sales a day, and we multiply that by 10 people, that means how many sales a day are we doing? 25. 25 sales a day. Not too hard math, right? Right? Can I say that? Yeah. Cool. Now, do you want to use Verizon or Nestle? Ooh, that was a tie. That's a tie. Who said it? That's who said it, right? Rock, paper, scissors. Which one do you want to use? On shoot, on shoot. Ready? Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Ready, ready? On shoot, you're going to say it. Ready? Rock, paper. Oh my god, I have no coordination. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Oh my god.
Cora. <laughs> you too hurt you. Cool. We we'll use, we'll use Nessie for right now. Okay. Cool. Now 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 the best way to do it is is just replace the the pro owner's profit instead of instead of the price by by our price. Make sense? And I'll show you how to do that. Okay. Cool. So twenty five sales a day, right? Times six days. Guess us how many. One fifty. One fifty. Yeah. One fifty. And that's sales on what? Nestle. On Nestle, yeah. And what's the what's the time frame? A week. Uh, okay. So 150 sales a week. Not bad. Uh, that's not bad by all uh, by, by by all means. Okay. Now the way it works is on the side. I'm going to show you how owners profit works. So for every sale, Nestle pays us 107. Correct. Correct. On average, how much of that goes to the rep? 50. 50. Right, 50 goes to the rep. So that leaves left for the owner. 57. 57. Now I know there's some entry levels that get paid 40, some uh, leaders that get paid 50, some level twos that get paid 60, okay? But the average, is, can we say it's 50? Yes. yes. So, this is gross profit. And then the 57 is what kind of profit? Net. Net, Net profit. Okay, it's a little bit of business school for you. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, all we're doing is if we multiply, we can multiply this by 107, but then we have to subtract it by the commission that we're paying out yield, because immediately, who gets paid when we get the direct deposit? We get, we pay it to? Reps. Reps, reps right, we pay it to y'all. The money goes straight to y'all. So if we want to do times 57, that gives us the gross of the net profit. Net. Oh, sorry. It gives us the net, okay? Now this is for, this is for your water. This is for just fish bowls, okay? For dish over here on 5D. Okay, the gross profit is 210. The owner's profit, okay, is 120. Yeah. Make sense? Mm -hmm. Any of any questions on any of that? Anybody confused? Should I start over, Sharon? Do you have any questions so far? Should I start over? Mm -hmm. All right. Everyone makes sense with that? Is it okay to be is it okay to be transparent with uh, with profits? Yeah. Can I say that? Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Cool. So, right. The time 57, that gives me how much uh, net profit a week? $8,550. Yeah. Cool. Now, that, that that's net, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, is it, is it safe to say that there's expenses that come into a business? Yes. Okay, now anywhere from a, a rookie owner, the thing is, is not only for the first month does your promoting owner pay for all of your expenses in the first month, okay, but we try to minimize all of your expenses to have a very, very low overhead. Does anybody know what overhead is? Anybody know what overhead is that's a little newer? Someone take, anyone want to guess what overhead is? Go ahead, go ahead. I guess You're it would be the, the expenses. Oh. That's it. Expenses. Yeah. Done. <laughs> yes, overhead is expenses. That's it. Right, good job. Now with confidence, what's overhead? Expenses. Expenses. Mm. Business school. Yeah. Fast. Yeah, overhead is just expenses. How much is it does it cost? <coughs> Excuse me. Okay. <coughs> oh god. How much does it cost to operate the business every week? Okay. Now a new owner, we want to keep it to about two thousand a week. That's about a good, that's about a good. Now, in order of running a business, can we agree that's very, very low? Yeah. yeah. Weekly. Weekly. Weekly, can we agree that's very, very low? Mm -hmm. That includes accounting, bookkeeping, okay, recruiting, rent, uh, everything like that. We keep it to almost 2,000 or below. Can we agree that's absolutely insane? Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, have you ever seen the expenses on just, like our insurance, our business insurance is included in that. Do you know how much that usually business insurance is a week? It's usually in the 20 case. Like, have you ever seen the business? Uh, look, someone look up how much it costs, well, not right now, but someone look up how much it costs to have business insurance on like a McDonald's or like a franchise, like Chick-fil-A. It's absolutely insane. It's like, it's like 35, 30 ish K when I last time I looked. Like for a Starbucks, it's absolutely even more insane. Okay, because you have like perishables. Anyways, right? So that being said, our expenses on average is about 2,000. For a, for a promoting owner, it's gonna be about 4,000. So can we say the average is about 3,000? Yeah. Cool, can we say that? What's up? So, I got a question since you said like, uh, 
But isn't McDonald's like um, tied in with the government? So, because you know it's like hourly pay, like you have to clock in, so like on the time. So, like, what's the difference between, like, you said this is like a self owned business instead of a, like government type? You're talking about how we differ from McDonald's. Um, so basically, you said McDonald's is that is that we don't have to pay for a franchising. Okay. So, so we're a third party customer acquisition, so we don't have to pay a franchising to use Nestle. Instead, we have a contract with them. Okay, okay? so we're like, I'm, I'm the sole owner of this company. So then, someone can say they own a McDonald's, but they can't say they own a, a, a company that works with McDonald's. Do you see the difference between that? So if, you, if you're if you gonna own a McDonald's, you have to pay the franchising fee. For McDonald's, for Starbucks, for Chick-fil-A, for Chick-fil-A, I think it's like 50K to own a, to even just get a franchising fee. Okay, we do not pay, we do not have to pay franchise fees. That comes through our brokerage. They actually pay that for us. What's the difference between owner um, overhead versus a rookie, rookie owner versus promoting owner versus overhead? Different. You, usually the only thing that usually changes is your expenses won't change a, a lot more. What's gonna change is like the amount of where you funnel your money. Mm -hmm. Like as a promoting owner, right, I, I funnel a lot more of my money into recruiting. Cause I want I wanna I wanna start pushing the office now that I know where this office can be. Right? An owner, I mean a rookie owner, I'm trying to minimize expenses. So as a, think about it, like we, we started a business with four people. So does it make sense to funnel $5,000 a week to hire 50 people? Yeah. Like they, they legitimately cannot get trained. So slowly starting like incrementally increasing in recruiting is why some owner's expenses will go up. Thank you. That's a great question for yourself. These are both, both great questions. Anybody have any other questions? No, cool, let's keep going. All right, so with that being said, the weekly expenses at 3,000 and, and if we will also run a meeting uh, next Tuesday uh, of how an owner's expenses are broken down. Like every week, I get a financial report by our bookkeeper, her name's Laura Porter, okay? How much it charges to run the business, and I'll go by each one financially, okay? So for right now, we're just gonna label it as weekly weekly expenses. Can we, can we, can we agree on that? Yeah. Awesome, so the net cash flow is how much? $5,550. Awesome. Every? Week. And so that means after, now, does does owner's pay come out of this? No. no. Now, now, let's separate this two, okay? Because the way it works is, right, between this owner's payroll and net profit, Alexis has already paid herself. I have already paid myself. Okay, this is what's going back into the what? The business. 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 business, the business. Okay, the way you create wealth and the way you create a lot of money are very different. Okay, because yes, that's Alexis' money for hands down. But think about it, would it make sense to take all the money out of the business right away? No. No, right, how would we pay for conferences? How would we pay for more recruiting? How would we pay for um, bonuses and stuff like that? Right, you wanna make sure that that you're, you're, you're still letting your business eat as well. Does that make sense? Yeah. Awesome, so this is going back, this is after expenses, after the owner paid themselves, after they paid the reps, this is how much is going back into the business. So you said like the owner pays themselves. Do they pay himself like just what you said to the fifty-seven, and then, or is there like other stuff like that too? You you actually determine your pay when you're an owner. Oh, okay. I right, like you determine that. your pay. So I personally, me, if anybody wants to know, that's why I still go to the field. I only pay myself what I make in the field still, oh, okay. and I let everything funnel back into the business because now I'm an asset rather than a liability to my business. Mm -hmm. And that's for every owner, like just in our business, like every, like, you know, Nestle lets you do that, or? Uh, it's all, it's, no, it's, it's how, it's, a, it's the way we're business run, it's called an S Corp. Oh, okay, okay, got you. Yeah, that's just a little more business talk. Yeah. Cool. And with that being said, right, you can pay yourself whatever. You can pay yourself all 5,000. You can pay yourself six bucks and a high five. You can, you can go anywhere between that, right? It's like what, what's financially makes sense for you. Okay, now there's some things that, now if you're gonna receive coaching, right, like Alexis is such a great student, she's like, hey, this is how much my business made, right, her business her business after paying everyone made $3,000 last week, right, which is 150K. And she's telling me like, hey, out of this, should, like what's a reasonable amount to pay? And that's just such a great student, right, because you determine your own pay. Can, can we agree now why standards are so important? Yeah. Because anybody who's uned unethical, who, who who's, wants instant gratification versus delay, what, what would somebody with what wrong morals do? Take, Take, time. Time. Take the whole thing and, then, and, and have a great Friday and weekend all there, right? And yes, it's still there for you, for you, for you right? But it's like, hey, what, which one do you want to last longer? 
right? Your hangover or your business. Okay, type of thing. Okay, now, now this is what just hitting the standard. Now let's talk about if your standards were to drop as a rep in the field, how that translates when you're an owner. Okay, so you don't do your one-on-ones, you don't honor the partnership, you're not reading books, so you can't retain that sharp person that you like. Okay, so a couple of people fall off, they find a different opportunity. So, two people quit. Is that okay to talk about turnover? Yes. Okay, and you're not doing what it takes, you don't go to the field every single day, right? You're not showing, you're not, you're not setting the pace in the field as a core leader. So, people go, get away from the two and a half sales a day, and instead they do one and a half. They just drop it by, everyone does one less sale. How many sales a day is your business bringing? 12. 12, okay. So let's go through this a little faster. Six days that we work, get to us 84, 72, 82, 72. Yep. Every week, we times that by 57. Okay, that gets us what? 4,104. Okay, and let's say you keep this going. Let's say your expenses slowly start going up, okay? And, and, and now you, you took on a more expenses. You bought a very better office, okay? You put in more recruiting, but you can't retain them because you stopped reading books, you stopped honoring the partnership. So now your expenses are, are went up a little bit higher than they should have been, and instead of 3,000, they're 4,500. Okay? Okay, what does that leave us with? 396 minus, like, so negative 390. Okay, so uh, this is a little bit of business term for you. Right? Whenever you get a financial report, anything that's expenses not only shows up in red, but also shows up in parentheses. Okay, they don't put a negative, they put parentheses. That's how you know that something's in the negative. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay, so now you just, by, by letting your standards fall in headcount and in sales production, okay, now that's how much your office is producing. You do that times 52 weeks in the year? 20,592. And the whole, right? Mm -hmm. Now, we told you in this business, hey, there's absolutely no ceiling. And we were 100% serious. It's uncapped for you, that means it's uncapped for us. I have no problem saying that. Okay, but even though there's no ceiling, there's also no floor. floor. Okay, this is true business, this is what it takes. Okay, and think about it, we lost two people and we just let the standards drop by one. That, that, that means every leader that, that we need three to qualify for an interview, just us two. And how many, uh, don't, you don't have to raise your hand, please don't, right? But how many of us have let that happen in the field? Raise your hand. How many of us, how many of us have, have let that happen in the field where we're like, it's just one, how many of us were one, one away from qualifying, right? How many of us were so close to either halfway qualifying, right? The, it never happens where we drop the standard from six down to four, and some people are stopping at two and three. And th that's standards. That's what standards really means. Long term, right, your, op your office, I promise you, your future office is looking at you right now. Because the best thing is, is who do you think you're gonna leave with when you get make it to Brent Management? You're gonna leave with somebody in this office. We are going to take some people in this office and move them with you. And if they know that XYZ person is okay with leaving with zero, leaving with one, leaving with two, that's the same way they're gonna treat their business. So do you think they wanna up and move their life and get the opportunity from that person? No, the sad fact is no. Right, so that's why when I'm texting people with my voice message, who's received a voice message from me already? Like a joint while they're in the field, ever. Okay, cool, right? That's why I'm telling you like, hey, give me one more in 30 minutes. Give me one more in 30 minutes because I'm trying to raise your belief for your future office, not for mine. Okay, not my, I know I will do what it takes in the field. That, and that's not, that does not mean to be cocky, right? That just knows that I, Richard instilled that same standard in me. And my main priority is to get you to management before I become your friend. 
I would rather be your be, be the person that gets you and your family financially free than bit than than is the one that tells you, hey, it's okay, take the day off. Okay, because I'm I'm see, and we're like managers have the ability uh, of ability not availability ability to have foresight to have to be able to be proactive. Alexis is crushing. There hasn't been a single week since you opened up the business that ten thousand dollars in gross profit hasn't come in through the funds. It's absolutely insane. There hasn't been one week where her business has not profited under two thousand dollars a week. I have no problem saying that. And I'm still like, hey, what would Richard tell you to do? And I'm still, hey, live below your means. Because Richard's still telling me as a promoting owner, hey, go to the field when you can. Hey, what would, what would you want me to do if you're, I was in your office right now? And that's not micromanaging. I appreciate that. Because how, how many of us, right, have ever, have ever cut short our diet? have missed that day in the gym, have gotten just one more dessert, have spent maybe a little too much from the Friday check. How many of us, yeah, uh, some people looked away. <laughs> some people were like, Danny, shut up. <laughs> How many of us stopped at that cook got on the way home when we knew there was food in the, free, in the fridge? Oh yeah. Okay, I, yeah, me too. Okay, me too. That is why uplines are there. Because when it's 7.30 and it's a little bit getting a little bit dark and you, no one is looking and no one is looking and you can sit on that curb and scroll through Instagram and no one will ever know, I promise you there's somebody in your future office, there's your future leader looking at you right then and there. There's that new hire who might see something through the window or might see something on the other street seeing you on, on, on the curb. Hit that last door. Go an extra five minutes, right? If you want to live a life without looking at the price tag, right? You got to work today without looking at the clock, and stop waiting so much for for a break, and start looking for a big break. We we got to get into that mentality, right? Win the day in, in goals, not not in production. I am I will not touch the car again until I have 40 touches. I'm telling my team, right? And, and, and it's funny because there's a, I was with the rep yesterday and he was on the phone. And I'm like, hey bro, like this is game time. <laughs> right? Like, would you rather blast Kanye West and get, uh, uh, Kanye West and get ready for the game? Or, or, or do you want to talk about finances and go over accounting reports? <clears throat> like which one gets you more pumped for the day? He's like, hands down. I'm like, cool then hang up the freaking phone and let's go. Like my bad. I'm like, it's cool. I don't blame you, right? But I need to hold those standards because if I wasn't there, how would he be doing? Uh, how would that person be treating their new hire? But like when you walk in, there's leaders that are like, hey, I already taught back in my system. That's why I'm promoted. Yes, but no. Right, you can get in here early, and some people go straight. I don't know what it's, it's almost like a magnet. People walk in and they're like, "Oh, outside patio," and then they just sit down and do nothing. Right, like some people, we, we, I think we need to do a better job at like, my future office is looking at me. My future office is watching how I work. My future office is watching how I leave the field with zero. My future office is watching how I talk to my downlines and my uplines. That's another one. I'm, 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 in, I'm coming passing and I'm like, wow. We have talked to y'all's team. It's crazy. And I'm sitting there I'm like, wow. Respect can be a little bit up. Right? And I'm like, you're, you're few, there's somebody that is either, either getting attracted by your leadership or disarmed by it. There, there, there is somebody. And, and entry levels, this, this goes for, for, for us as well. You're being like, I'm seeing. Hey, how do you work now? Because I'm gonna, I'm, there's someone that's gonna walk in and be like, man, that person looks just like he. That person walks, talks, acts, motivated, right? Conducts himself just like he. 
And if he's doing the right things today, if he's the one that's teaching back the systems every single day and going out there, I'm like, take him. And I, I know you can get this person to leadership. But if I have the slightest doubt in key, does it make sense to put someone under key to set someone up for failure like that? No. Right, so my job is to hold Steve key to those standards because he doesn't know what he doesn't know. I know what I know. I know what he needs to know because I had to go through it. That's why your uplines are there. Right, that's why those uplines are, are, are in place. That's why they're training y'all today because what I'm trying to help everyone understand is that my, I never understood why my mentor told me the things he did until now. So some of y'all try to understand the why, you won't understand it for a couple of months. So until then, just do it. You don't have to know the why to get the result. Make sense? Yeah. All right, so your future office is looking at you. What do you want them to see? Are they gonna use that? Yeah.